Hi everyone, this is Nancy LT Hamilton and I'm really pleased to be able to present this video of a class at Chimera Arts, which is a maker, nonprofit, community-based makerspace in Sebastopol, California, that was taught by a lovely, amazing woman named Jenna Hounsell, who is a professional caster and has been doing this every day for over 20 years or something like that, 15 maybe, I don't remember. Not important. She does it a lot. Let's go there. Anyway, um, I am terrible at cutting molds. I learned in this class and I thought to have a video of this process would help not only me but everyone else. I need to watch it again and again because it looks deceptively simple and it is not at all. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to let Jenna take it away and please do remember that this is a classroom setting. There are other people asking questions and talking, and it's not as staged as a normal video would be. So bear with us on that, and I hope you enjoy the information. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to start. <laughs> Just say your name. My name is Jenna, and I'm going to show you how to cut a registration lock on a rubber mold. Um, so first I'm taking this excess off the edge and then I do examine where my parting line is going to go. On this piece, it's a nice consistent thickness. The part is right in the middle, the sprue is right in the middle, so I'm going to put my parting lane right in the middle. My parting line, my mold line. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut these registration locks. I'm going to put my knife in about an eighth of an inch and score the corner where the lock is going to go. After that's scored, I stick my blade into that groove and I spin it and follow that corner around. That is cool. So now I have two walls of that lock cut. I'm going to clamp my mold. This mold is a little bit thicker than that last one that I did, so I can loosen it up a little bit, make my jaws not so tight on it. Um, but I still want to make sure I can pull on this without it slipping out, because I am going to pull it open. I can see those two side walls on my registration lock. And the reason I can see it is because I'm really, I want you to pull this and see how hard I'm pulling. So if that happens, that's a good reason to test how hard you're pulling it too, because then before you go in there with your yeah. knife, okay, now pull on it, see what happens. Okay. So you're just pulling that little skin mm -hmm. off of that corner. Go in with the blade, and now I'm cutting the top table of that registration lock. I place my blade back along the top of that table and I just rotate it and then come down the side. Come back along that table, rotate it, come down the side. Mm -hmm. And see how that little cube just mm -hmm. pops out? It looks really counterintuitive because that cube is embedded in, you're like, how can you cut a cube out of the inside of that mm -hmm. mold? Mm -hmm. But this clamp is really gonna help you open it up and see how to access your blade in there. So I did my score about an eighth of an inch. I'm always cutting towards the table. I put my blade back in that score. I rock it to the side and I'm just kind of following it around the corner. And I'm going slow. Once you cut it, it's cut and there's no rush. So you might as well just go slow. So I'm, I just kind of get under there with my thumb and hold it open. And you can see I'm not putting my blade in before I do that. See how it's kind of held up right there? I'm just gonna nick that a little bit. Give me a little bit more access. So I'm coming in with my knife. I'm cutting the tabletop of that registration. 
I put the knife along the tabletop to the edge. I turn it and I'm just pulling it down a little bit. If I have to readjust, I'm gonna do that before I try to get my knife in there. So I'm making sure I have a good hold of it. Come back along the table, spin it, rock it. Once you do all four of these registration locks and then you're just plowing down your parting lane, it's gonna be easy peasy. The registration locks is um, the first step you do and it's the tricky step. So all the keys are cut on that guy. Um, I'm gonna finish cutting this one just while we're on it because we already know where that parting line's gonna go. And now that my keys are cut, I'm just cutting a straight line down to pull those two sides apart. Um, that central sprue is one of those hook ones. So I'm actually not cutting down to the sprue. See how there's mm -hmm. still, because I'm worried about the parting line of the part. I'm going to worry about the sprue later. So it's okay that that sprue is still embedded in the rubber. I'm going to come down. So why would you bend the, the sprue on one that's all lined up like that? Um, I'll show you when I pull it out. It was, okay. it, it's um, a finishing thing in the metal. It's going to make my life easier later. I'll make my mom happy. Yay. Um, it's not as necessary. This rubber is pretty sticky and we have all these locks. So this trick I'm going to show you on this particular rubber, it's not as important, but the way I was talking about all this texture to get that zigzag, I just kind of wiggle my knife as I come across. So and I kind of, the the it just gives it a little bit more grab okay. Okay. between the two halves. Does it prevent the, um, the wax from... Flashing. Spring. Flashing, yeah. Yeah, if you're injecting wax and wax is flowing in there, the more uh. registration, the less, the more those two halves will stay together and mm -hmm. prevent the wax from like flashing up. Mm -hmm. So when I do that, I'm going, I'm not rocking it when my blade's against the part because I want my parting lane to be really intentionally placed. And when I'm going like this, I don't, I don't necessarily know what's going to happen. And um, I'm right-handed, so I like cutting this way. I, I'm like, I can't, I don't feel safe cutting this way. So that's why I keep flipping the mold. And that's the other nice thing about how easy this clamp is. I can't imagine doing this with a fork. Yeah. <laughs> So every time I, I'm kind of working both sides at the same, so I, I'm not just um, opening one side without opening the other. That's why I'm flipping it back and forth. I'm putting my knife along the part, and then I'm kind of rocking the blade away from it. How could you cut one if you can't see? They have opaque uh, molding material. That is nuts. Yeah. You, you have to remember how you screwed it, how you placed it. <laughs> and when crazy. I do, when, if, if, if I was cutting all of these and I didn't, we didn't know whose was whose, mm -hmm. it, yeah. I, you have to label the mold. Sometimes yeah. if I use an opaque rubber, like the food safe rubbers are opaque, so sometimes I use different rubbers for different reasons. I'll take a picture of the mold frame, how I screwed it, what the part looks like, so I can pull out my phone and I'm kind of like oh, yeah. doing it blind. And, and I what, draw and like if you do it on those, like you can draw on it. I drew, yeah. just draw a cockamamie, ugly drawing, but it shows the placement. Uh -huh. the There's app. also a trick where if you take a sharpie and you draw the parting line on the master before you mold it, that pen ink will transfer hmm. onto the rubber. So as you're cutting, you start hitting the ink and you're like, oh, my part is close. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So why would you use the um, uh, the Tupperware rubber that you can't see through? Is there a yeah. benefit to using that? I use it if somebody gives me a natural rubber master oh. because this stuff doesn't cure against it. Oh. Um, if I need my mold to be food safe, if somebody's going to use it to make chocolates or uh. this stuff's not food safe. I see. There's different uh. 
There's different rubbers that are made specifically for different things, uh -huh. but in jewelry, yeah, this is pretty straightforward. Like, yeah. yeah, you could go 20 years and not need another rubber, unless you want to eat your jewelry. What did you <laughs> say that again? Unless you want to eat your jewelry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as I'm going, I'm just kind of cutting until if if something's preventing me from being able to pull. That's when I do the rock climbing thing, and I, I go and investigate, like, what's what's preventing me? I have these pierced out areas that are still anchors, so I'm going to release those. Oh, and I just cool. I didn't drag the blade. I just kind of, when I can, I rock it. It just feels, I have more control that way than doing this. Um, there's a couple more little pierced out areas. Um. I'm gonna let those, I'm releasing those, so now I can go back to my external parting plane and keep working down on that. So Jenna, did you say when you're first <coughs> by, like the, basically the, the right next to the piece, you're not rocking it, and then like, then you start rocking it as you get further away? Yeah, I kind of, <coughs> I like am placing my blade really intentionally where I want it, uh -huh. and I'm like starting the cut, and then I come out and rock. And then you rock. Okay, that makes sense. If you guys feel more comfortable on these not doing the rocking and just going across, that's perfectly fine. It's yeah. not going to affect the performance of your mold drastically. Um, so as soon as I can pull this out, I pull it out of the way because now I have I can I have a clearer visual. And now all of my cutting is past the part. So now I just kind of go nuts with the rocking. Okay. All right. And then I hit those keys that I made before. Mm. Mm. And now I have the two parts. And now there's a high possibility her keys look so much nicer than what yours will look like, but that's okay. <laughs> there's a high possibility. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the two parts that's beautiful um so what i wanted to show you guys was i don't know if i went over this in the group but the best way to intentionally place your parting line is to start with your knife at the part and work out so i'm flipping it i'm going back and forth because i'm right-handed and i'm always working this way if I want to work this way, I'm doing this awkward hooky thing, which feels not safe. So for me to start at the part and work out, I'm always working this way. So now I've done that side, I'm going to do another cut on this side. And I kind of want to come down evenly on both sides. So I'm at the part, working out. And the other um, important thing that I felt like I was saying as I was walking around is when I'm doing that I'm really pulling this open as much as I can because if I'm not pulling it open and I'm going I'm kind of cutting blind a little bit yeah. when this is open I can see more what's hanging up my rubber why can't I pull these two apart right now when I do this my my um, limiting hold up on the rubber is that center plug. So I'm gonna start releasing that center plug. Are you cutting in the middle of the center plug? In the middle of the ring. The, middle the rubber the that's going through the ring like a finger would. But you kind of cut on the edge of the plug, right? Or did you cut through like the middle of the plug? It doesn't really matter. Okay, it, cause it's gonna meet anyway. Yeah. The two sides, okay. Totally. Um, so now that I've released that, I'm going back to the the external part of the part and I'm doing really consistently, I'm placing my knife at the part and working out. And the reason that's important is because some of you um, were having a hard time, even though it's clear when you're cutting and you're in there, you're kind of like, where's my part, where's my part? Mm -hmm. And you, it's easy to miss it. But if you start the knife at the part and work out, then you're not working from the inside, trying to find mm -hmm. the part and line it up the way that you want. So now I'm going slow. Like 
you're right, I want to go fast, but I know that plug's there, so I just kind of cut to it, oh, and it nice. should release. This one's kind of weird shaped, which is fine. But if it didn't get cut all the way down, you can kind of fudge it from this mm -hmm. direction. Like, make it oh, there's no wall there. I'm gonna spin it and give myself a wall. I think that's what I um, But you gotta go slow to see what needs more cutting. 